In today's video, I am going to be breaking down the scary truth behind Michael Jordan, why he was so amazing, and some of the things that he did that you can incorporate into your game so that you can be just as good, or at least hope to be just as good, as Michael Jordan. Let's get down, let's check him out. So in this first clip, he gets that pass from Steve Kerr, and he keeps that ball high. This is extremely important because, of course, he has a secondary defender who's dropping down to him. By keeping it up high, making that fake pass, that makes that defender think that he just kicked that ball out back to Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr was a very good shooter and because of that he was able to have himself basically a one-on-one -on -one isolation situation against another pretty good defender. At that point he takes a dribble into that man. You really want to cut your dribbles down to only one or even two dribbles when you're in the low post because that will then draw that secondary defender once again. When he takes that dribble he takes a quick hop into his man and he plants both feet pretty well at the same time. Now, at full speed, you would think that he actually plants both feet at the same time. However, as we see here, he plants this right foot first because he's going in that opposite left direction. By hopping into your defender going right left, that's going to give you more momentum towards that left side, and then you can bring that right foot back around for your shot remembering to kick that foot out to get your right side in line because you want your elbow and shoulder in line and that ball over top of that area that makes that shooting triangle and because of that with his release he's able to make that shot and let's remember that it's not just that hop and how that foot works it's also what he does to his upper body that sells that fake spin move See, if we watch it at full speed, you can actually see that shoulder fake that also does bait that man into thinking that, of course, he's going to be, of course, going, see that shoulder fake right there, in that direction. That drops that foot, creates that new top foot, in which case you want to always attack that top foot. And we can see this in multiple occasions on both sides as well. Here, he receives that pass, he takes a left-hand dribble like if he's about to attack that middle of the court, then he takes that quick hop, shoulder fake as well, very important, that moves that defender towards that left side, so that now when he pivots back around, especially if you're right-handed pivoting towards your right side, that's going to allow your right arm, again, to get in line much easier, and that ball being over the top of the shoulder or even upper arm, depending on the type of shot or shooting form that you have, will allow you to be able to, of course, make that shot in. Kicking that right leg out is extremely important on a spin move or spinning for a shot because, of course, that's going to allow you to get that right side in line. Now, of course, Michael Jordan had a lot of hang time, but there was actually kind of a secret behind it. He doesn't have any more hang time than any other player, but it's what he does with his legs that allows him to get more hang time or to allow people to perceive that he's got more hang time. Let's take a look at this. So when we slow it down, when he's jumping, he brings his legs up. That creates more distance between his feet and the floor so that now he can create more time in the air so that he can get shots like this off. Now I'm going to tell you right now, when you're going back down in your shot, especially as we see right here, this is taking a lot of upper body strength. You need to have muscle strength in basketball. It doesn't matter if you're six years old or if you're older. Push-ups, squats are all body weight exercises that you can do even at a young age. And even here, where he's muscling through multiple players, this takes a lot of strength, a lot of core strength after hitting that defender to try to clear him out of the way and still making that shot. Lots of muscle, lots of body strength. I'm going to tell you right now, Michael Jordan made a career out of this footwork, and you can too. It's really not that hard. One or two dribbles down towards the key. Make that hop into back into that defender. When you make that half spin, make that shoulder slightly dip. And then, after you make that shoulder slightly dip, you turn back around, you go up strong, two hands on the ball, because people are going to be hacking on it, and then you're going to be able to make that shot, and one. Also, change of height, and, of course, misdirection. So here, he's pointing over here. He's making that defender think that something's happening over here, or he wants something to happen over here. Michael Jordan's also standing straight up. He's not currently in attack mode, and then, as soon as... He drops his shoulders, watch that defender's feet. 
The defender's on his toes. Defender's on his toes. Defender's on his toes. Michael Jordan gets down. Now he's in attack mode. This is when the defender says, oh no, and his heels go on the ground. At this time, Michael Jordan wants to get his shoulders below the defender's shoulders. That is going to give him leverage into that man, but also more speed towards the direction that he's moving. At this time, he's keeping the dribbles low end to a low number. He's keeping essentially the dribbles below his waist. If you dribble the ball up high, that's going to be a lot more distance to the ground, and of course defenders can pick that off. Here he does that space, that fake spin move once again, same one as before, but with this angle we can really see what I'm talking about with his shooting form. The shoulder and elbow are in line with the rim, and that ball, at least half of it, is over top of that upper arm. That's extremely important to have a straight shot. And something that a lot of players don't do today, and that is get away from double and triple teams. A lot of players think, well, I'm stronger than everybody. I can get through two or even three players. That's not possible. What you need to do is be able to see that coming. And here he's, Michael Jordan is able to get away from that triple team and still make a shot. That is because when he was driving down, He's keeping his head up. He's knowing where that defender is. Up until this point right here, he's knowing exactly where all five defenders are. And when Michael Jordan drove to the basket, there were multiple defenders always packing the paint because they don't want Michael Jordan to get to the rim. Here he's able to spin towards the momentum of where these players are all going. He then spins away with his pivot foot and at that point, He's got basically nobody guarding him. So by attacking the top foot, knowing your footwork, being able to hit shots with a very good shooting form, and then of course on top of it all, having court awareness, knowing where the other team is, uh, basically allowed Michael Jordan to have one of the best careers in the NBA ever. His hang time is not magical. He just basically brought his, his feet up a bit higher near the end of his jump so that it looked like he was in the air much longer. Of course, we all know that free throw line dunk, and that does give him the ability to say that he was floating, but there's been many players in the past that have done that as well. Anyways, I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time.